Kat Gerber. She has worked with the city of San Francisco to come up with a uh, peak oil preparedness plan. And she's here to talk to you about some of her research, some of, um, some of what she knows, and uh, here she is. Uh, her, um, her lecture is called Think Globally, Act Locally. No oil tankers, no pipelines, no tar sands. I'm sorry? Oh, and this is Ben, and Ben is, um, who's Ben? Uh, ben is a campaigner from the Wilderness Committee. Um, there are one or two unrelated things that I want to start out with. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about housing, because I know that's one of the hot issues here. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about framing. As you know, if you don't frame yourself, somebody else will frame you. One of the things I've noticed in your local press is one of the areas where you got a lot of bad PR is that you've cost the city something like a half a million dollars in police and who knows what other expenses. That's not the fault of people at Occupy. That is the fault of people who make the decision about how many cops you get and things like that. So uh, frame yourself and throw it back anytime you get something thrown at you. Another off-topic remark. Uh, I'm quickly going to go over some housing stuff. I think there may be a housing panel in the next couple of days that I will be in on before I go back to San Francisco. But you know that developers control the process of real estate development. Duh! They're the ones with the money, right? And politicians go along with it either because they don't understand the topic or because they want to get reelected or because they're looking for what their next job is going to be after they're not a politician anymore or for a dozen other reasons. Developers get their way. The kind of development you've had in Vancouver is close to the kind that we've had in San Francisco. I recognized it instantly the minute I got here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you want to know when you talk to people at City Hall about how to do development differently so that you get more middle class and affordable housing out of the process. That's part of the goal, right, folks? Okay. Um, You've had a massive building boom here. Most of it is high-rise condo development. Everybody knows what the law of supply and demand is, right? The more you build condos, the more the price comes down on condos. Not a surprise. Now, developers sell this by using a form of what's trickle-down economics, right? If we build these condos, then people who are going to buy, buy them, and therefore there's more left for everybody else. Now, anybody who is awake knows the trickle-down hasn't worked ever since it was first proposed in the 80s. That's right. And there's an American humorist. I, I don't know how familiar Canadians are with American humorists. There was a guy named Mark Twain, died in 1910. He came up with my favorite definition of insanity. He said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. When you build more condos, you do a couple of things. You distort the market. In addition to the supply and demand thing, where you're bringing down the price of condos and that takes up the price of your middle class housing, I can talk about that at too much length. Catch me afterwards if you want to know how that one works. But what you get is, pardon me. Um, what you get is a higher percentage of condos in your mix. That's a really bad distortion. It hurts students. It hurts working people. It hurts everybody who isn't a condo buyer. It accommodates people who want to buy a pied -a terre in Vancouver because it's cheap. It's cheap compared to where it ought to be. Um, so when you go to City Hall, know these things talk to City Hall and basically explain that future development needs to be affordable, middle-class housing, and you're going to get pushback. Developers, I'm going to guess that currently they're making somewhere between 10 and 15 percent on their development. If you tell them they have to do development that's good for people like us, then you're telling them they have to take a haircut. They're going to get half as much profit as they currently are getting, and they're not going to want that. And so they will entice, in quotes, politicians to give them what they want. 
find out whether or not your city hall has got the cojones to stand up to the developers and say no future development is going to be affordable it's going to be for middle class no more high-end development this stuff about how high-end development uh, is good for everybody has shown itself to not work don't keep making the same mistake over and over and expecting a different result one more thing to know it's high-rise condos in Vancouver um, I was here for the first day croissants about a year and a half ago and there was a developer running around trying to get enviros to buy into the notion of what he termed as transit oriented development what he wanted was he basically wants to open up fresh turf for new high-rise condos at the train stations like King Ed and Oakdale and so on. Um, you're not going to stop the development train suddenly. It, if you stop it at all, it's going to slow down, which means you're going to have some. All of the new high-rise condo buildings should be put next to the existing high-rise condo buildings. I think that's Metro Town here. Somebody who knows Vancouver better than I do will know where that is. Don't open fresh turf for new high-rise condos. This is another one where I can talk for too many hours about why. If you want to hear it, catch me later. So these are things to know when you go to City Hall. Find out what your politicians are made of and explain to them that what they've been doing to date isn't working. Time to try it differently. What you need is housing that can be afforded by students and working people and folks who are here at Occupy today. And it, that's what they want to concentrate on. So I don't want to digress too much because Ben and I have too little time. Um, this is our topic. Think globally, act locally. No oil tankers, no pipelines, no tar sands. Yes to sustainable energy. Uh, I'm going to be open about something. I'm what's known as a peak freak. Uh, peak oil has been consuming my life since 2002 when I first knew about it. How many people here know what peak oil is? Okay. For those of you who don't, I always warn people, Google it some night when you weren't planning to sleep anyway. <laughs> it's one of those kinds of topics. And it's huge, and it's a six-month timeline in terms of getting a good education because it intersects with economics and everything else there is. Um, and maybe it's worth it. So what's the think globally? What's the unifying theme for Occupy? It's that the system isn't giving good results. And you can see it. There are charts all over the Internet showing the distortions in the system the date back, or the distortion part really dates back to about the 80s in America. I'm not sure about Canadian economics. We've always had inequality. It's not about the inequality per se. It's about the injustice that is making the inequality worse. We have inequality that we have not seen since the 1930s. It's about uh, dysfunctional government. It's about captured uh, regulatory agencies. It's about people with money being able to buy retroactive immunity. It's about a system that isn't working. It's not fair. It's about the fact that we no longer have a level playing field. It's about the fact that you can't get a fair hearing in a court. It's about the unfairness and as well as the results that are delivered by that unfairness. And Ben and I are here today to talk about how that intersects with local Vancouver issues. These are enviro issues and these are economic issues. I live in California, so I'm going to talk in broad generalities about what's wrong with these. Ben lives here. He's going to fill you in on the details of how this affects your lives here in Vancouver. Okay, so we're going to start with the oil tankers. Every oil tanker is an accident waiting to happen, no matter how careful the pilot may be and no matter how much insurance they have and everything else. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with the fact that when you have what they call a spill, boy, is that the wrong word? 